Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a PHP login system. It's going to connect to a SQL database that's hosted on PHP My Admin locally. I do have a video on how to set up the Ubuntu machine that I'm going to be using. So if you don't have a VM set up, you could click on that uh, link that I'll leave in the description and I'll show you how to set up the Ubuntu machine. So the interesting thing is that I'll be using ChatGPT to write all the code for me. And the site itself is going to be in PHP and HTML. So it's going to be pretty simple. This isn't a secure site that you would host externally or in production. This is just to kind of give you fundamental knowledge on some of the technologies that it's going to be using. Because one of the things that it will be doing is creating session and cookies that will be stored in a database table. And it will have a page in the site that it checks to make sure that the user has a valid session. And if they don't, then they're not not able to visit that site. It'll also have a logout page that once clicked, it'll take the user to a logout page and it will terminate the session and delete the cookies from the database. So some pretty neat stuff. And this isn't going to be some fabulous website with CSS or JavaScript or anything like that. Again, this is just to show you some basic stuff and to allow you to build on that foundation. Uh, the reason for me creating this video is because I'm going to be creating another video for my Evo Gen X series where I'll be showing you how to make fishlets. So I needed an environment and I wanted to allow y'all to follow along in those videos. So that's why I created this, but you don't have to worry about that sort of stuff. If you just want to know how to make just a basic PHP website with cookies and connect to a SQL database, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get started. All right, so first we need to install MySQL. So we'll do sudo app install MySQL dash server. Yes. All right, that takes about a minute or two to install. All right, so if we run sudo MySQL, we'll see that we get uh, access to the MySQL. And the first thing we're gonna do is change the password to the root user. So I'm gonna change the password to be top secret. It uh, gives me query OK. Now I can exit. Now I'm going to run this MySQL secure installation, which will change just some of the configure some of the default configurations to just make them a little more secure. Enter the password that you just changed it to a while ago. Um, right here, we pretty much just do default settings. Uh, just do yes or recommended settings. Um, right here, since this is just a test database, right now it's asking the password requirements. Um, I'm just going to do low just because, again, this is a test environment. Um, if this was a real environment, then you do strong. So I'm going to do zero. I already changed, or we already changed the password to root, so I'm going to put no. Uh, remove all anonymous users. Yes. 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 All right, so now that's done. So now if I try logging into MySQL like I used to, it won't let me because I'll have to provide a password. So I'll do MySQL passing the user of root and then prompt for the password. I'll enter the password that I just created a while ago. And I'm just gonna create a database that we'll use later on that's gonna be called user login. So create database user login, make sure to put the semicolon at the end. Now if I look at my databases, I can see that user login is right there. So now I can exit. All right, so let's install PHP. sudo app install PHP. All right, so now that's installed, I'll install PHP my admin. Right here, click yes. All right, so right here, it's going to ask me what type of web server I would like to be configured to run PHP my admin. I'm familiar with Apache, so I'm going to select that one. Press the spacebar to select it and then enter. Right here, I'm going to select no. All right now, I can look to see if Apache's running. With systemctl status Apache 2, I see that it is running, Q2 exit. Now if I go to open my web browser and I go to localhost slash phpmyadmin, so right here you would log in with root and then the password that you created. We see the database that it created a while ago. Okay, now that we have a machine up and running PHP my admin, we're ready to start creating the actual site. Um, I'm not familiar too much with PHP and um, creating like a login page with session IDs and cookies and all that sort of stuff. So I did try uh, my normal like Googling around and then try looking at some videos, but my progress was pretty slow. Um, so then I was like, well, let me just try using ChatGPT to help me create this. Plus, um, it'll give me more familiarity with um, utilizing ChatGPT as a tool for stuff like this. So here's my conversation with ChatGPT and you'll see that I kind of have to talk with it a bit 
just to get it to do exactly what I want it. So at the beginning, I asked for it to just create a simple login page that'll redirect to uh, dashboard.php. Um, I'm gonna be doing it on local host. And then I asked for it to create sessions and cookies. However, on this first try, it doesn't create any cookies, just sessions. So later on, as you'll see, I'll have to ask it again to modify the script or modify the code to allow cookies to be created and stored in the database. And I like the dashboard page to make sure that the user has a valid session. That way, they that way people can't just go to the dashboard page without authorization. So I would need for it to check to make sure that there's a valid session going on in order to see the dashboard page. And then I would like for it to provide uh, the code for the dashboard page. So it gives me this prompt. Um, it gives me some instructions on how to create the PHP my admin tables, which was nice. And that's where the user login database that we created a little while ago comes in. Um, if you did create a different database name, then just modify um, all the code from user login to be the database that you created along with um, if you change the passwords in the database, make sure to put the one that you created. So it gives me instructions on that, which we'll do in a little bit. And then it provides me the following login.php code. Now this isn't the final code, but just to show you kind of what it uh, presented me, it gave me a, a very good start. And I was actually very, very happy with what this gave me because a lot of the other videos and sources that I was finding before ChatGPT, I would create it and then it just wouldn't work. And then I'll have to go into debugging and everything like that. So the code that it gave me, that it gave me right here did work right away. Um, I will also say though that if you are doing copy and pasting or editing and you do come across an issue where the page is blank, like it just gives you a white page, then most likely there is a syntax error such as a missing bracket. So the HTML is pretty simple, just two fields. Um, it does have some PHP in there in case there's errors and then appears the PHP code and it does start the session. It does create uh, two of the post requests that would be needed, which is username and password. Right here is the command that will connect to the MySQL database. Right here is the database user underscore login. So again, if yours is different, change that uh, root. And right here, we'll put in the password to root. Root has a default password of being blank. That's why it's blank. So we'll change that. And the local host because it's going to be hosted on the local host. Here's the query command that we're going to be sending. That's going to validate the users. Um, it's going to send the command and store it in a result. So it's using the connection that it's creating and then the query, which are these two right there. And then um, it checks the results in this if else statement and sees if um, the result is equal to one, which would mean that the login was successful and then it'll redirect them to dashboard.php. And if not, then it'll present them with invalid username or password. And then after that, it has the dashboard.php code, which is a lot smaller because I didn't really, we didn't really need too much on there. I pretty much just have it saying their username and then um, a logout option. So we have the session start. If they don't have a session, then redirect them to login.php. And then also provides with the logout.php, which the dashboard redirects with this logout.php link. And pretty much all this does is um, it destroys the session and then it redirects them to login.php and also gives a really good description um, through these descriptions that it would give is how I learned what the code was doing. And if you, if there is a line that you're unsure about, you could just say what does and then paste the line do. And it'll give you a good description of what it does. And later on, you'll see that I have to ask for, for some clarification whenever I go into the databases because I was unsure on how to do that. So this isn't the, the final code that we'll be using, but let's already create this database right here. All right, so let's open up Firefox. Let's go back into our PHP, my admin. We'll go to user login. We're going to be creating a table called users like it asks. And we'll be having three columns, which is going to be ID, username, password. So let's do ID, username, and then password, add the ID, stay integer. These two are going to be varchars, and we're going to do 255, like it says. And the ID is going to be the primary key. Click OK and save. Go to insert. 
So I'm gonna create a username name, named user and then a password called pass and give it an ID of one, uh, select go. And then now if we go look at browse, we can see that it's created right there. And that's what we'll be using to log into our site once we have that set up. So now let's go back to ChatGPT. Okay, so whenever I was going through this and I had um, created the first login.php and I tried going to it, the site was completely blank. So that's why I mentioned doing the checker. So it was pretty nice because I said log login.php page is blank whenever I visit it. And it gave me some recommendations on uh, what might be the issue. And one of the things being was check your PHP syntax, which was correct. So it is pretty cool that it does give you some common issues that uh, might be the case for you. So if you do run into any issues, I mean, you, you can um, ask it as well what might be the issue. I, I did want to see the session token that was being created. So I asked for it to print out the session token to the screen. And you can see right here, it uh, displays the, ses the session token. Um, it, it creates session token and grabs a session ID. So it gets it and then it presents it. So it, it even adds the comment um, saying what it's doing, which is nice. So then it gives a description as well. And then this is where I had to ask it, how do I implement cookies into this? Like at the beginning I did ask for it to say, I, I did ask for it to have cookies, but it didn't. So um, I had to ask for it again and it did really good. So after I asked it, it created some more lines most notably this one right here where it says set cookie and it'll, it'll be stored in session variable. So it grabs a token and then it um, sets it to expire in one hour. And then it modifies the dashboard as well. So it does a check uh, to see if there's a cookie. Um, it, grabs, it grabs the cookie and puts it in the session token. So here it, it did make me a bit confused because I was pretty much asking, do I add another column? Because I don't really get what's going on here with the whole database thing. Um, so it sounded like I was saying yes, but it was really meeting you create a new table and it'll be using that table to store the cookies or what it'll be called session tokens. And then it gave me another login.php code along with uh, another dashboard.php code. Um, and then I, I asked another question about the database. So what length should they be? It pretty much just says it depends. Um, and then gave me, gave me an example. And then I was kind of confused if, if I need to create another database or another table or another column or, or what exactly. And so I asked and got some good clarification. So it pretty much said, yes, you have to create another table inside that database and then have the values of session ID, username and session token the website will be creating the data that will be going into this new database. So let's go and create that database in phpMyAdmin. All right, so let's create that uh, sessions table. So we'll go to user login and we'll create it to be sessions. Make sure to have an S at the end and we're going to be doing three columns. The first one's going to be session ID. Second one's going to be username last one's going to be session token and we're going to have these as var char for each one of them and we'll have it as 255. We're setting the session ID as the primary and after that click save. So your screen should look like this if you go to structure and if you go to browse it's going to be empty and we're going to leave that empty. All right, so let's go back to ChatGPT to make some modifications to it. So before logout.php got rid of the session, but now I want it to get rid of the cookie as well. So basically what it does is it's gonna set the cookie and to make it to be at expiration time in the past, that way it will already expire. But uh, what I also wanted to do was make it delete the entry in the SQL database because whenever if whenever I tried it with just this code and I would look at the database, I would see the entry get created, but I wouldn't see it get deleted, uh, the cookie. So I wanted to have it modify the SQL database and it does a really good job. So now it prints out another logout.php and this time it makes the connection and it deletes the cookie in there. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed that now it's saying require 
a file called config.php, which obviously sounds like a configuration file that it hadn't mentioned before. So ask for some more clarification. So this is another example of, I was unsure of one of the commands that, or one of the lines that it was creating. So I say, what is this command? And pretty much what it is, is it'll store information such as the username, password, and so I asked for pretty much a template so I can see what exactly it is. And you can see it pretty much has all the information that we would normally put in each of the previous files So for the database. So it has the uh, location of the database, the username, the password, the database name, and it makes a connection and it also does the error handling. So this right here is pretty much gonna replace the lines of code that are in the previous examples such as so this line right here where it makes a connection and then you have to manually put the server name the username password blah blah well that's what config.php is going to do so this is really good if you're having multiple files and not having to um, have this in each of the line and then also whenever you do to make updates so say for example the root password changes well having a config.php file makes it so much simpler because you just go into this config.php file and you just change that variable and now you don't have to worry about going into each of those other files and then change it. So whenever it's a small little site like this where we only have like three or four pages, it's not too big of a deal, but um, it is good practice in a production environment. You will have like a config file um, and you just need to change that. So I do implement this and then just change this field to the uh, password that you set it to and then this one's going to be user underscore login or if you change it to something else and that's what you'd put um, it also gives a description on what it is so with this um, I was in a good enough place to create the actual site so let's go back to our Ubuntu server and then start copying these configuration or these PHP files um, and have it hosted on our on our Apache server all right so we have our Ubuntu server over here and like I mentioned we go to var or slash var www.html and that's where all this is going to be that's the default page the index.html so I'm just going to remove that I have to have sudo permission so I'm just going to go to sudo su since I'm going to be modifying modifying stuff in this directory and I'll have to be dealing with um, permission issues all the time so I'll I'll turn to the root user and it's empty and I'm going to be creating four files. If I do ls, I'll see that those four are created. Now I like to use Vim. You can use your favorite editor if you like. There's a text editor built into here, but again, I do like Vim, so I'm going to use that. And by default, it's not installed, so I'm going to install it. So let's clear my screen. And the first thing I'm going to edit is the config file. So vim config i to insert. All right, I'm going to paste the text from the config. And I already have this edited. And I'll have this in a GitHub uh, repository. So you could just copy from there. You don't have to um, manually see this and type it out. So I'll provide the uh, GitHub below. And you could just copy and paste from there or just git clone it if you like. And again, change the password and database if it's something else. So I'll save this, so I'll press the escape key, colon, WQ for write and quit. And if I cat config, I'll see that the settings have been saved. And the next thing I'm gonna edit is the login.php, so vim login.php, I to insert and then paste. And I have my PHP code in there, write and quit. And now I'm going to go to dashboard.php, I, then paste, right quit. And lastly, I'm going to go to logout.php and do that. So now if I go to localhost, well, first to show you that this page isn't there anymore since we deleted the index.html. If I clear it, it won't take you there. It'll show you the um, directory of the files that I created. Again, this isn't a secure configuration. Um, this is just to have it up and running. 
<laughs> and since we're going to be messing with cookies and you might run into some issues if you have some syntax errors and it might create the cookie and then you're going to be stuck on the um, dashboard page so i like to have the uh, edit cookie extension and that'll allow me to delete the cookies that are saved on my browser so you could just look at edit cookie firefox and i like this one cookie dash editor so just add it and then you could have it to your taskbar like that and so whenever you need to edit it you could just um, click on it and it'll have it so i'm gonna delete whatever i have on there and now i'm gonna test out the website and i'm gonna use user and pass as the username and password, which again is stored right here in the user table. Once I click login, I don't want to save that. Um, it pre presents me with the token like I asked it to do. That way I know that a token is being created. And if I go to the sessions table, I can see that one's created right here. And if I look at edit this cookie, I can see that here's my session ID right here. And here's my cookie, which is saved as a session underscore token variable. Um, it didn't make any modifications. It looks like the code just creates a cookie that's exactly the same as a token. Um, again, that's why this is not a secure thing. Um, usually cookies are a lot longer and um, different than the token. So here's uh, the username and the token, like I mentioned. And I'm going to click log out. And you see that it redirects me to the login page. And if I look over here and refresh it, I can see that the entry got deleted in the session table. So that covers how to set up the web page. And again, like I mentioned in my intro, this one was a setup video onto my Evil Gen X2 on how to create fishlets, where I'll be creating fishlets against this login portal. And this isn't a secure website that you should be um, hosting externally as you can see it is pretty ugly anyway so i don't know i don't think anybody would even do that but just a disclaimer this is just kind of give you familiar with some of the topics such as cookies and php how it talks to my sequel uh, how you can set it up that sort of basic stuff um, kind of foundation on on what you can build on and lastly make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you enjoyed it thanks for watching